And finally, in the first chapter, we are going to mention the vented appliance categories and how are appliances categorized. As you can see in this image, we have a, a type C vent connectors that are attached to a type B uh, vent, vent manifold. And for the trained eye, this will tell what is the category of the appliance that is connected to the venting system. So let's find out how we categorize appliances. This is in uh, your code book B149.1 in the definitions. And it mentions that the category, there are four categories, one, two, three, four. And that if you, if you look closely in the definitions here, an appliance that operates with a non-positive vent static pressure. So we have the vent static pressure as one criteria that is mentioned in all four definitions, right? And the other criteria that we have is flow loss that is also mentioned in uh, for all four categories. So what we're going to do is we're going to break uh, down those factors and see how they are going to uh, that what are the limits border lines of uh, having the uh, appliance categorized either one, two, three or four. In the first place, we are going to, however, talk about flu loss. All right. So let's talk about flu loss and see how things work for flu loss. Uh, going back to our concept, the theoretical concept of providing combustion air and fuel gases, uh, either natural gas or propane into the combustion chamber, and also uh, sustaining uh, the combustion, uh, generating heat uh, in the heat, and, and then using the heat exchanger to uh, send the heat to wherever it is uh, needed, uh, space heating or, or whatnot. Uh, just mind you, of course, there are certain uh, appliances where um, maybe both the combustion chamber and the heat exchanger are one component. Um, this, these tubes, this is a top view of a, a mid-efficiency appliance, and I'm saying mid-efficiency because you cannot see the secondary heat exchanger. That will be the definitive uh, proof of uh, and of this furnace being uh, not being high efficiency, at least. Uh, I just started talking like the, the code book right now. And um, these tubes are what we call both the combustion chamber and the heat exchanger. So mind you, sometimes there is a overlap between the two, but we understand that um, what we care about is the flue gases that is inside the tubes, not outside the tubes. So um, good, we have generated heat right here and we have uh, you know, allow the heat to be picked up by whatever medium we're using, air, water, uh, that comes in, takes the heat away. However, we also know that there is no perfect, there is no perfect heat exchange. So some of the heat will stay behind. And what will happen is the appliance itself will have two main ways to dissipate heat. One is through the heat exchanger, and the other is unfortunately through what we call the venting system here. And you probably want to remember that this is also called flu. And flu gases go up there, and the flu gases sometimes are hot, sometimes are you know cooler, depending on the combustion. Now in in mainly mainly there are th this is from your code book there are certain applications where the heat leaving through the flu is so much the apply and, and we're not talking about residential ap applications we're talking about major uh, uh, industrial commercial applications that we want to uh, re reclaim some of the heat all right so if you look at uh, 8.31 in your code book, 
you're going to see how um, 8.31.1 says a heat reclaimer shall not be used with a gas-fired appliance installed in a dwelling unit, a mobile housing, or in a recreational vehicle. So I'm, I'm just going to call this residential, basically. If you have a residential application, it's probably using a not too big of an um, of a, of an appliance and therefore the flue gases don't contain a lot of heat just because the appliance size itself is small the flue gases are small so say for example this would be maximum of 100,000 BTUs all right this is just as uh, as a, an example to uh, compare it to a heat exchange a heat reclaimer installed in a commercial or industrial gas fired appliance shall be so straightforward green light for uh, you know using uh, heat reclaimers on commercial or industrial gas fired appliances as opposed to uh, saying uh, that for residential meaning dwelling units mo mobile ha housing or recreation vehicles you can't use it unless it is approved to be used in that uh, application so I think it is clear here that in uh, in terms of non-residential here, and um, we're talking about, you know about uh, appliances that can go into millions and millions and you know uh, of of BTUs per hour. So that much of um, heat generation will definitely have a lot of flu uh, heat in it. So that's why we are going to use that for. Uh, heat rec uh, reclaiming it means that we can reclaim a lot of the heat that is being lost here because this let's 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 be honest this is loss and it is lost because we're dumping it into the atmosphere we're not making any use of it so if we can reclaim a little bit of it that would be a uh, gain so pay attention to the heat reclaimers that's going to be definitely on the TSSA exam. And if you think about it, you have uh, flu loss here. And you have something else here. We're going to name this part, which is 80%, something. But what is it that we're going to name it? And we ca you can say uh, flu gained, for example. No, it's not. It's a joke. So uh, pay attention to how flu loss and the other part, flu loss and the other part, always add up to 100. All right. So that's how it works. Again, if you have, for example, flu loss of 10, flu loss of 10%, the useful work that you've done is 90 percent therefore we call this efficiency and in the field you're not going to see a lot of uh, conversation uh, using flu loss mostly you're going to see uh, people talking about uh, efficiency however the guiding principle has never changed this is the guiding principle of uh, what we want to achieve, we want lower flu loss and higher efficiency, obviously. So, in terms of that 100%, what we see on top, this small section here, is your flu loss. We don't want that, you know, section, we don't want that line, we don't want this line, to go too low we don't want that to happen we want to keep that line going up so flu loss is the heat that is lost through the vent and uh, efficiency is the uh, heat that we have kind of used uh, through the heat exchanger and the definitions are very very clear the definitions say that anything um, that uh, that has flu loss of 17% and higher is category 1 or 3. So
So if your flu loss is 17% or higher, your uh, appliance is category one or category three. On the other hand, if you have um, you know, an efficiency that is higher than 83%, so if your flu loss is less than 17%, don't forget that the flu loss of 17% plus uh, efficiency of 83% always add up to 100%. That is not going to change. So if uh, your if your um, if your appliance has so if your appliance uh, efficiency is smaller than seven sorry i shouldn't say okay is is uh, i was going to uh refer to appliance flu loss so if your appliance flu loss is less than 17 percent so you're losing 16 and a half 16 percent or 15 percent if that's what's happening then your uh, appliance is category two or category four so here is a test question and i am asking this question because sometimes we uh, get confused on uh, the value that is exactly at the cutoff which is 83 percent efficiency if an appliance has 83 percent efficiency that it is um, a b c or d you have four answer choices can stop the video to think about it or you probably know that it is category one or three and how did i reply uh respond to this question i thought okay 83 percent efficiency is what is translated into 17 percent flu loss all right and 17 percent flu loss by definition, is category one or three. And once again, here are the definitions. As you can see in category one definition, flu loss not less than 17%, meaning the flu loss should be 17 or higher. And in category three, it's the same thing. Flu loss not less than 17%, meaning uh, the flu loss should be 17 or higher. That's your way to think about it and somehow translate between efficiency and uh, flu loss. It is very helpful to build a visual uh, aid uh, to remind you how to categorize appliances based on the two criteria. So far we covered the first criteria which is flu loss and uh, we're going to talk about it in terms of efficiency because we can because we know flu loss plus efficiency equals to 100. So efficiency 83 or lower is category 1 or 3 because this is uh, flu loss. This is flu loss 17% or higher all right and if it is if the appliance has an efficiency of uh, 83 percent or bigger it means the flu loss is less than 17 percent it would be category two or four and then the question becomes okay if we have if if i'm in this column how am i supposed to distinguish between category one or three what's the differentiator here what makes category one versus category three and that brings us to the vent static pressure uh, we're going to talk about uh, why you know for example static versus just pressure here is a uh, both of them are top of um, water heaters domestic uh, storage type water heaters you see a draft hood here there's no motor you know there's no motor and you see an obvious venter motor here you know for a fact that you know when you have the, the and this is also um, a high efficiency furnace you know for a fact that when there is a motor here you're going to push 
positive pressure in this pipe that is going to happen because that motor uh, is running a fan and the fan is creating all that push and the positive pressure we know this for a fact but why do we say uh, you know static versus uh, you know pressure so in uh, the study of pressure fluid pressures that is uh, thermodynamic if you wish uh, there is a notion that says total pressure is equals to velocity pressure plus static pressure. What, what does this mean? It means that if you are studying pressure as a force that has a direction and, and a magnitude, you can break it down into two components. One is called uh, velocity pressure. So I'm going to call it V here, velocity pressure. It is in the direction of the flow. And the other is static pressure. And static pressure is the one that pushes against the walls. And that's why we want it, because we want the pressure that pushes against the walls, because that's what's going to create a leak or a, um, you know, a spill of um, flu gases. On the other hand, the one that is pushing against or in the direction of flow is not going to create a leak at all because its direction of force is not towards the walls. So in the code book, you need to pay close attention to the type B H vent. It is, uh, you can, you can say it is a special venting. Uh, basically it complies with uh, ULC six, system 636 or standards uh, 636 and uh, you must use um, parts that to create a system vending system that are completely manufactured by the same manufacturer don't mix and match uh, different manufacturer parts that's not uh, that that would go against the standard also in uh, 8.9.6 it says vent constructed of plastic piping shall be certified to this uh, system 636 but does it mean um, that all plastic piping yes all plastic piping okay but what about system 636 that is not plastic well that's fine um, there are four uh, i would say uh, cl uh, classes or uh, temperature ratings let's call them temperature ratings in this case of system 636 as you can see the first one is up to 149 fahrenheit and then the the second one is up to and including 194 um, and then you have up to 230 and all those all three of those are plastic the first three are plastic so in uh, order you have your pvc and then CPVC that withstands a little bit more. And then the polypropylene that stands even a little bit higher temperature. But once you grow, you go further than that, you it is only safe to use stainless steel. As you can see, if you're going to use type BH and it is uh, going to withstand 275 degrees Fahrenheit um, uh, flue gas temperatures, it is only safe to use stainless steel. All right. Sometimes, however, sometimes, however, you're going to see this. You're going to see a venter motor attached to a C vent. And the biggest issue with this is probably that this motor you expect uh, that it would create positive pressure here. Uh, that is the expectation from seeing that uh, fan there. And the positive pressure means one thing if there is a crack or an opening or a seam or anything like that the flue gases will be pushed out because of the positive pressure inside and type c vent if you've seen it um, it's not air, it's not airtight it's not gas tight at all um, you can easily leak uh, great amounts of flue gases if you do that um, also, there is uh, this here, which is an example of uh, type B vent. Well, the reason you see those two types is that, uh, first of all, no more of that is happening at all. 
secondly, during the uh, process of developing better and better um, appliances, uh, we had uh, certain phases where uh, certain uh, Venter motor uh, running appliances were certified to, to be used by, by uh, Bvent and whatnot. This brings me, you know, to uh, the idea of a fan assisted burner. And I say this because a fan assisted burner, and it's not a, a draft. See, this is not about mechanical draft. This is not about natural draft or induced draft or forced draft. This is not about draft at all. This is about the burner itself. Sometimes the burner has uh, a structure that requires the you know the, the flu gases to run through hoops and there is too much resistance for the flu gases to run uh, that whole distance therefore we use a fan to assist the burner okay and we call it fan assisted burner because the the fan or or, or blower are at sufficient pressure to overcome the resistance of the burner only so theoretically you shouldn't have too much pressure here um, as much as you know uh, causing any leaks are too uh, it's counterintuitive but that's how it is supposed to work but again we're not going to see any more of those though this is an old example it is good to bring it to uh, to your attention because you still might see some of those out in the field all right so this is an exam question, and the answer is in uh, clause 8.10.7. Uh, it's in the codebook B149.1. So if you could go there and try to answer this question. Eight point ten point seven says that a type B vent shall only be used with an appliance that is number one, A, certified with a draft hood so uh, certified to be with uh, to to be used with type b or b certified and marked for use with a type b vent so you're either having a certified with a draft hood then you can use type b because if it has draft hood then um, they they uh, there is no it is non-positive static vent pressure and if it is certified to be used with type b then well the manufacturer is taking responsibility of using it with type b basically all right so what's non-positive vent static pressure good question heat rises and creates natural draft that is why natural draft is working because the heat makes you know all those flue gases rise up so that's your push that you force moving your flue gases but there is a funny thing about mechanical draft versus natural draft when you look at the static pressure for mechanical draft and natural draft both they both uh, have a velocity pressure that pushes in the direction of flow they both have it However, look at the static pressure in a mechanical draft. In a mechanical draft, the flue gases, the mechanical draft, flue gases uh, push against the walls. In a natural draft, because it doesn't have a positive vent static pressure, flue gases pull the walls in. So if there is any cracks or openings here, what would happen is air will come in and it will be just another stream of dilution air not necessarily the best thing but it is absolutely better than if you have cracks here flue gases you know going out definitely this is the least of two evils here so for category one appliances we know that they all have draft hood appliances or some kind of fan assisted appliances and in the code book you're going to see uh, that uh, for example annex c says uh, you're going to size only category one appliances and you are only two types of uh, appliances either the draft hood appliance or a fan assisted appliance 
So that's that's it. Your category one is going to be either draft wood or pan assisted appliances. And category two, uh, power vent at the outside wall. This is interesting. So the power vent or the venter motor is not an integral part of the appliance itself. It is a, um, a component that is it looks like it looks like an afterthought or aftermarket uh, part that you've installed it's at the outside wall or or uh, which is marvelous uh, an appliance that has direct vent so all burn all combustion air comes from outside and all the combustion products go to outside without a, a venter motor and it is using balanced flu this is definitely an engineering marvel but it is possible that's why you don't see a lot of category 2 appliances it's really difficult to design and operate category 2 appliances but there are a few types of uh, boilers uh, commercial industrial types of boilers that are category 2 and you might see them uh, in the field in uh, category 3 um, you know category 3 has a uh, flu loss of 17 percent or higher so you're you're losing a lot of heat basically with category three but you're using positive and static pressure uh, so what makes category three different than category one is that category two has some kind of a fan or a blower and category four is exactly what you want you want to have um not necessarily you know uh, positive vent static pressure but you want to have high efficiency i don't think 83 is even uh, considered high efficiency these days i mean we're talking about 95s and 96 and some manufacturers claim 98 percent gas appliance i don't know but it is there on the sticker so you'll uh, have to believe their word and then you you in order to do that you will have to do condensation and what is condensation so in an appliance like this one you always have that cons condensate drain line at the bottom of a uh, venter motor fan housing and you're always told that you should um make these pipes the horizontal runs of these pipes slope towards the appliance so that any vapor that condensates in those pipes will eventually seep and creep back to the, the housing of the venter motor here and uh, and then go out the condensate train but how does that work well, when you burn natural gas, so this is this is your natural gas. When you burn it, obviously with oxygen. So for for one burning one pound of natural gas, you get two pounds of water. That's a lot of water because the heat that you can extract. the vaporization heat of water is 970 BTUs per pound. All right, so those two pounds have something close to 2000 BTUs if you leave that as vapor and dump it outside as vapor you are dumping those 2000 BTUs constantly that is per pound of uh, natural gas burning so what would what do we do one option is to take the combustion products run it through the heat exchanger uh, the single heat exchanger and then send them to atmosphere there will be vapor here I guarantee you there will be vapor here okay the other way to do this is to take the combustion products the same combustion products run them through the first heat exchanger and you have vapor here okay and run it through the second heat exchanger 
then condensate that vapor and then send whatever is left to the atmosphere. That way you have captured or if you wish to call it reclaimed the heat from the combustion products. And those are the, um, this is the heat exchanger and the set of burners out of a furnace, right? And what you see here is that you're sending, I can use a red pen here. You're sending, okay, your natural gas and air inside. And you can literally see the flame being shot there. And then you're collecting them from out of those openings after they have run through the first heat exchanger this is the second heat exchanger and the second heat exchanger is uh, physically below underneath the first heat exchanger once you get your uh, flue gases run through the first heat exchanger you put them through the second heat exchanger and see how the cool returning air will hit the first uh, the second heat exchanger first so even though you have cooled down your flue gases the air that is going to run through those uh, flue gases will be even cooler so there will be guaranteed condensation so that's your second heat exchanger that is condensating there should not be condensation in the first heat exchanger absolutely not they are not designed for it and they will rust and corrode the secondary heat exchanger is designed for condensation it will uh, take condensation for a hundred years before anything happens to it all right so this is the final uh, look of the visual aid that i use so for category one i know it is with category three in that flu loss are 17 percent or higher but category one means non-positive and static pressure so for example you can say that it is natural draft this is how we're going to refer to natural draft from now on or it is fan assisted burner and this is how we refer to it in the code book um, for the next lecture, we're going to start the basics of vent sizing.